Hey everybody, it's Barbara, and we are about to find out if the prom date has her date, or she has the workman. Let's find out. This time I've learned to turn the knob. Which is of course not working. And I have, sorry for the shaky camera, I have the date. He looks slightly annoyed, doesn't he? I don't know why. But I do have the date. It's a lovely suit, and his bow tie very nicely matches her dress. Stay tuned, folks, because Tuesday night you will be getting the full review. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. So, if you had watched the previous video, which I hope you did when I did the reveal, um, and I found out it is, in fact, the date. Um, I, I took him out of the box, but I did want to, again, just very quickly give some props to this box, which does repeat all over the place, uh, the mystery date, uh, actual board game. It does it on the side, on Poppy's side. And it will also do it, by the way, in the uh, authentic authenticity card. And it will also do it uh, uh, around the usual, this is Integrity Toys, Warning, Choking Hazard. And again, you do get the pieces to play with um, in case you want to try to play this game. So there's always this very nice idea. Um, that you can play the game and I really don't and I one of the feedbacks I get is that I talk too much so if you want watch the bowling video and I do spend a lot more time talking about the box very interesting thing to know before we go right into the doll but since he's right here and I'm noticing it here he's dressed in a blue jacket and with the fuchsia cummerbund and tie which will very nicely match her dress Whereas, much more appropriately to the Poppy Parker era, he's in a white tux. Um, as I said, that's much more appropriate to the era and to the fact that um, in the spring, uh, that is what you do. You would go, you know, spring and summer, you would wear a white dinner jacket or a white sport coat with the pink carnation. I'm sorry, I had to go there. So, I, I'm also, by the way, not using the two stands that come with Poppy and Chip. I decided to use um, an older stand that you can fit two dolls on at once, so at least I could pose them together, because I thought that would be kind of cute. So, let me go ahead, since I'm here, let me talk about the date, first of all. Um, he is a green-eyed Caucasian male. There is no facial hair that is real. However, if I turn him to the side, you will see that the bottom half has like this very nice military buzz cut, but the top head, the top half is very nicely done, solid as a helmet. Mucho product. This is flocked. Interesting choice. So, I'm not sure what's going on there. Let's continue to turn him around, and I'm just going to very quickly look and see if, in fact, the bow tie, as I suspect it will be, yeah. Oh, no, it's hook and eye. The, the, the bow tie will close behind in hook and eye. Uh, since we're here, let's also take a quick look at the back and the back pockets, of which there are two. And you really cannot use them. I would say that the trousers are tuxedo material, so it's like it has a satiny feel to them, though I doubt they are very satiny. Let's go ahead, reposition and turn them back. His jacket is, as I said, the white traditional spring summer jacket lined in white suiting uh, with the IT label tucked in on what would be the left. The cummerbund and the tie will match 
it has that very nice black pearl detail, though I don't think that's real. And I also believe the shirt, if everything else is closing with hook and eye, so too will the shirt. And I just confirmed what I suspected, which is, unlike what would be the reality, he's not wearing an undershirt. Very rarely will you see that, that the IT folks will go that extra step and have the guys wear an undershirt. He has a real zipper, and, a, and the top will close with hook and eye. Just going to move Poppy for one second. The glitter party is already starting. Uh, his pockets are real. And I just noticed over here, there's this strange right here, sort of white. And I, I don't know if that's the jacket. There's like a little bit of white here. And I don't know if that, you can't really see it on the camera, but it looks like a little bit of the white of the jacket got on, on gone the black pants. So you want to be careful of that. Um, the pockets, by the way, on this jacket, also real, very nice. I did tie the shoes. One of them came, became untied. That's life. The socks are, you put them on, they come with, they're black, and he's got like an Oxford loafer. This is all very nice. Fortunately, I seem to be batting a thousand here. I should have maybe put gloves on because uh, there's also a little bit of staining here on his pocket, which hopefully somebody will be able to take out. I did want to acknowledge that. I don't know if that's coming from the suit or I'm look I'm taking a quick look at my hands, so it's not my hands. It's it could be the glitter on her dress. So speaking of her, let's take a let's take a look at Poppy. Give her the first thing that I want to say as I put her back on the stand is that this is a completely appropriate to the 1950s styled ensemble, starting with the sweetheart cut of the dress, the tulle overlay. It would have sparkle to it, though I'm not entirely sure that it would be all glitter as it is in this case. But this, this tool overlay over the skirt is and the bodice is completely appropriate and correct to the era. This also, by the way, reminds me, and I don't think this is a coincidence, of the Barbie Superstar. Uh, that is coming out um, relatively shortly. I think people have her on pre-order right now. So it's very interesting that you have that sort of same color dress, same style dress. Under the tool is the satin. And under the satin is another layer of sparkly tool. And then you get her stockings. The stockings are a little bit tricky because they do make it tricky to keep her shoes on. Put them on and keep them on. So more about them in a moment. I do want to point out that this poppy also comes with very nicely and very, again, appropriately for the era, the wrist corsage, which matches her dress. The pearl necklace just came off, but just to very quickly show you. It is a typical Poppy Parker single strand pearl necklace, again, completely appropriate to the era. They either borrowed them from their moms or their grandmas or when they turned 16 or 18, graduating from high school, they got their own pearls. It was a big deal back in the day. Poppy's eyes are blue and she is a blonde and there's not a whole lot of eyeshadow or eye makeup going on. There's a little bit of like a lilac silver right at the bottom lid. And then maybe on top of that, just a hint of the rose color. 
Um, let's go ahead and talk about, since we're here, note her nails are going to match her lip, and her lip and the nails will match the dress. P.S. By the way, the toenails also match, but you really won't see them underneath the stockings. Her eyes are lined in black, and her lashes are real. They're applied. They go over, they go just about to the bridge of the nose. They're a nice, decent length. And, uh, again, black mascara to completely appropriate to the era. I do want to warn you about the hair. Be very careful when you take the hairnet out. Unfortunately, the hairnet gets caught up in the curls. The curls will bounce back, but you do want to be very, very careful of that. So you can um, so you can just put them back into place. It's a very it's a very cool hairdo. It's a very appropriate. Again, I'm going to keep saying this a lot. Very appropriate to the era. Um, the dress is going to close, by the way, with hook and eye in the back. And as usual, there is also that tie just to keep the straps on. So I elected tonight just to do that as well. One quick thing to tell you about the dress and the tool. The tool is completely appropriate, but the tool has a lot of glitter on it. So be prepared to have a glitter party. And again, you saw they got on his jacket a little bit and it's smeared. And just to note the front with the tool overlay over the entire dress, including the sweetheart bodice, which I will give you a better look at right now. It almost looks like there's a bow underneath the overlay, but I'm not sure. And I'm certainly not going to pull it off to find out. So back in the day, we used to have these things called dyeable shoes. And we did that so it would perfectly match the dress. This is no exception. It's a higher heel than you usually see with Poppy. But then again, this being her first adult formal, it would make sense. She would have that very high, that adult heel. Nice detailing in the front, not quite a bow, but just like a little bounce there. Also appropriate is the white fur, the stole, which you would just put over, lined in satin. And the second pair of poppy hands, uh, the painted on white glove look with the gauntlet at the top. So you don't have dialing hands this time as much as you have gloved hands. And the gloved hands do appropriately match what would be the coat, or in this case, her evening stole. And again, very, di very diable and very appropriate, the clutch matches her dress. And if, the, if there were gloves, which there are not this time, the gloves would fit very nicely in there. The only other additional accessory that Chip comes with is a second pair of hands. Not quite sure why you would need them since he's not doing anything. He's not driving, he's not holding anything except her dancing, so maybe if you wanted that for a pose, you could have that. Everything about this is period appropriate. Their hairdos, the way that they're dressed, the fact that he's in a white jacket for a spring or summer formal event with the black pants, that's all 1950s, 1960s appropriate. It's appropriate for that era that she's not wearing uh, jewelry other than the pearl necklace. As a teenage girl, she wouldn't overdo it that way. And she wouldn't wear a ring unless she was engaged, which in this case she's not. Um, this is all very cool. And as I said, you know, earlier, the dress is very reminiscent of the Barbie superstar that is currently out by Mattel. So you might even want to get this set just to have Poppy and Barbie twinning, which would be hysterically funny. Or you can get this dress and then, you know, use it and create your own superstar. That's something that's something to think about. And with the white tux. You can definitely get that. Obviously, it's going to fit any chip body. It's also going to fit, I would be willing to say, the slim fit action figures that come out or the narrow shouldered action figures that are out there. So that's a nice thing to have for them if you have an action figure that's in a vintage diorama. So that's a good, good thing to get. And you can always 
switch out the cummerbund and the tie. So that's all going to work very well together. And what's, what's best of all is that this is a set um, that isn't going crazy on the secondary market. It's still reasonably priced on the secondary market. Um, it doesn't come loaded with accessories the way the bowling and the ski set did, and even the beach set. This is, this is when, why would it? You're going to a dance. You don't need to take a lot of stuff with you. It's not an activity. The activity is the dancing. So you don't necessarily need to uh, have a lot of accessories. And I think that's part of the reason why people are not going crazy jacking up the price. So if you can get it at a reasonable rate, I certainly would. I certainly, by the way, would particularly get the poppy because people love poppy as a blonde and they certainly love the updos of poppy when she's a blonde. So this is a perfect one to get. Um, if you can find them, definitely go ahead and grab them. I certainly would. So for me, Barbara, for Poppy, and for Chip, I will see you in my next review. We will be returning to the Miniature Mondays, and we will be returning uh, to looking at some mini some more Rement and Alcara miniatures. We'll be back with some action figures, too. So, so everybody, enjoy and take care. Bye-bye.